Let's talk about relational databases, which are the most used nowadays, the ones used by all the business applications, the ones we use with Microsoft Access, or the ones used to manage Internet servers. Although in Internet servers, there are other types of databases for all the unstructured information, the foundation behind most of the systems in reservations, airplanes or shopping logs are relational databases. The relational database is based on a basic element, the table, a table is what you see here. For example, here there is a table containing flight schedules and another one containing departure airports. This could be a database for flights or aviation or airlines. The tables are organized in rows and columns. Each table is defined to store data of a specific entity. A specific entity is a noun, a thing, a place, something about which we can store data. For example, we could have a table for automobile type entities and store its cylinder capacity, the diameter of the wheels, its color or whether it is sporty. Any information that we can think of, we can store it in a table. We can have another table for employees or for students. In this case, we have one for departure airports relative to a flight number. Whenever we want to save data about an entity, about something specific, we will create a table. The tables are organized in rows and columns. Tables are also called relations or files in this type of databases. In the columns, we have what we call the fields. A field is an attribute of an entity. For example, the flight number, the airline name, the day of departure, or the price. In the case of a table of cars, it can be the color, the cylinder displacement or the diameter of the wheels. A field is an attribute and it is represented by a column of the table. A record, also called a tuple, is a row. A row that is the specific data for a specific entity. For example, my car is blue, it has certain cylinder capacity. It is a specific data in each of these fields for a specific entity. That's a record. In fact, the smallest data that is stored in a table is the combination of a field with a record. In this case, it is the airline of this flight number. In order to define the fields, we need to give them a name. We usually use a name that has something to do with the information that they store, so that they are easy to read. We also need to specify what kind of data will be stored in it, whether it is alphanumeric data, just numbers, and whether these numbers are going to be integers, or are they going to be real numbers with decimals. Depending on what we are going to store, the data occupies more or less space in the database. If we are going to use the flight number, which is an integer always, it is worth defining it as an integer and not to store it neither as text nor as a real number, because that takes up more space. There are also specific fields for saving images or for saving any massive information, called binary, which can be used for storing sound, image, video or dates without specifying exactly what type it is. There are many types of fields. We usually store the length of the maximum size of the data in the field. There are some fields that allow for the information to grow in case we have to save images and we don't want to determine a maximum size, so we can save any image. However, if we are going to store flight numbers and the numbers go up to a thousand, then it allows us to use less information. Or if we are going to store airline names, then with 30 or 50 characters is more than enough. Here we have the fields we were talking about with the name, the data type, the size and the format. We can also specify a format. In fact, in the database, for each field, we can define whether we want to be able to store any information of the type we have defined, or if we want it to be restricted by a set of rules, or if the data that can be stored in this field comes out of a list of possible flights. 
If we are filling in at what time flights depart on a day, in the field flight number, we cannot have any number that is not defined in the flight code table because it would be absurd. If there is no flight 5555, we cannot store it on the table. That can be defined. As I said before, a record is a group of fields related to a single instance. What gives the power to the relational database models is that the tables are related. Here we have a database of a store, and we have here the customers, the employees, the orders of these customers, the details, this is a grocery store. In each line of the order is written, I want 10 bananas, 5 packets of macaroni. Then here we have the suppliers, the products and the product categories. Dairy, beverages, cereals. Here we have the shippers. Notice that we have a field called customer, and here we have a customer ID, and it is related. Here we have a field called employee, and here an employee ID. In this way, we can extract collectively the orders of a given customer and the orders of a given employee. We can merge this data. We could have put it all on the same table, but that would make us have a lot of redundant information, and we would also lose flexibility. In this way, we can take together any number of related tables and summarize the data of several tables at the same time in a very flexible way and without having the information repeated. This concludes the video where we have talked about what is a relational database that is based on tables. That tables have columns that are called fields, which are the attributes, and rows that are called records, which are each of the different occurrences of an entity. For example, each of the cars, each of the employees. We have seen that the fields must be defined their name, their type, and their length. And finally, we have also seen that the power of the relational data tables comes from the fact that these tables, that are stored one for each entity type, are related and information can be extracted collectively from them.